For this project, we're going to be making our own sort of version of Magritte's uh, famous painting. And I'm going to start off with just the eye. I'm drawing in Sharpie, which obviously is a terrible idea for any of you to be doing. Um, do as I say, not as I do. I, I'm only using the Sharpie because it shows up better on camera. You should be starting off sketching in pencil. Um, one thing that I always try to recommend doing as I'm drawing the eye, um, you'll notice it's not like a perfect sort of oval or football shape. It's a little bit pinched at the corners and I leave a little bit where like the, that sort of tear duct is. And then when I'm drawing the iris and the pupil, I, I start off with a circle that is like so large, it's covered up a little bit at the top and bottom by the eyelid. Um, when I when I draw the pupil, I'm drawing a smaller circle inside of there, obviously, and I leave a little bit of a highlight where the light's reflecting off it. I made it kind of cartoonish. That's just sort of the style that I think I, I've always been drawn to, and I think it works for um, these illustrations in the video. Um, now, inside the eye, you can put whatever you want. Part of the idea with surrealism is free associations and sort of creating subconscious connections between things. So I replaced like Magritte's cloud imagery with um, another famous work, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Um, just a, my own quick sort of simple version of that. And... I am coloring with crayons, of course, during remote learning, you have your choice of materials. You could do this very easily with paints, with other materials. One of the things I really like about crayons is it allows me, it allows me to make my work more colorful. So uh, with the Van Gogh piece, you know, impressionists and post-impressionists were so much focused on color, the expressive qualities to it. Also, the way that our eyes perceived color. So there's a little bit of the optical color theory happening there where these streaks and dots and dashes of colors are unblended um, by the paintbrush. They are blended by the viewer's eye, which obviously, you know, like I said, free associations kind of between the eye, the iris, the the image inside of the eye and optical color theory, it, all that's not lost on me. But I, I always like to try to have these different layers of meaning to my work as I'm creating it. So like I make these associations that enrich the piece. Um, at least to me, they enrich it when I can start to make different connections to a piece. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the shading on the eye. One of the most common mistakes people make is they leave the, the white of the eye as pure white. But even though the eyelids are very thin, they do actually cast a shadow. And the eyeball, it is a ball. It is a sphere. So you're going to have a little bit of shadow um, and, and shading where it's going to look a little bit darker sort of towards the edges around the perimeter. Um, I, I put darker shadows sort of over the eyelid where the, the crease is, where it sort of goes back into, um, into the, the eye sockets. Um, I put a little bit of a shadow along sort of defining the edge where the, like, the nose would be and things like that. Uh, one of the most common mistakes that students make as they are, are shading is they don't make the shadows dark enough. You want to have a wide range of values. Um, you know, students often ask me, like, like, where's the skin colored crayons or markers? Like, there is no skin color. It's not one singular color. Um, even on one person, there's going to be a range of values and a range of hues even on their skin. So, you know, you might make it a darker or lighter skin in some areas, but, but, even on the same person, there's going to be that range of values. And you want to have very dark shadows, very sort of light highlights. I mix in a little bit of that sort of pink in some areas to make it a little bit warmer brown for the skin tone. Um, because generally speaking, a person's skin is going to be usually a warmer brown brown or beige tone. So I, I mix in a little bit of pinks in some areas, maybe a little bit of yellow in some areas. I might use a darker brown in some areas to make the, the shadows a little bit darker. I want to have the highlight shadows and mid-tones. And like I said, you want a wide range of values to make it visible even from a distance. Um, the most common mistake students go is they go too subtle. It's all sort of this muted mid-tone range. And the final detail that you might see in there is, you know, make sure you add the eyelashes. And generally speaking, the eyelashes are going to be pointing 
away from the the tear duct in the middle. They're going towards the outer edges of a person's face as a general rule. They're not always like neatly lined up, so you can have them going sort of different ways. But that's sort of the basics to this. Now, you can put whatever you would like in as sort of a reflection or a mashup of images in your eye. Um, but what we want to see is a very large detail shot of the eye filling the page. And then I want to see another image put into that iris. Whether it is a landscape, clouds, sky, like... like um, like Magritte had, or you want to put some other images in there. You want to put a basketball in there. Whatever kind of connection you want to make is up to you, but put an image in that eye. 